This is an, an example of an AC analysis problem at level 2, and this will be the second type of problem on that level. So we're going to go into AC analysis, and let's look first at an example of this type of problem. So in this problem, we are being given the problem in the phasor domain. As you can see, that the reactive elements have values in ohms rather than farads and henrys. And also, the value of the source is being given as a complex number or a phasor. Therefore, we are in the phasor domain. Um, this is a single loop problem, as you can see. However, our SOT variable is now a non-branch voltage. That is a voltage that appears from here to here, which is not across any one circuit element. And that's an additional uh, complication in the problem. So to solve this problem, we have to remember that if we have a SOT variable of a non-branch voltage, which is marked here with a, a dashed line, that we can only combine elements on one side or on the other side. On this side, clearly there's nothing we can combine because we only have a source and an impedance. On the other side, we do have three impedances. However, um, this impedance has a SOT voltage and therefore cannot be combined without converting that to a SOT current. So for simplicity here, we're just um, leaving that alone and combining these two impedances. And remember that impedances simply add in series. And so that becomes J1 plus minus J8 becomes minus J7, as indicated here, um, which is a capacitive impedance. So it could be shown as a capacitor, but really it won't have the same frequency dependence as a true capacitor. And so for that reason, it's being shown as a generalized impedance. So at this point, because there's a dependent source involved, we're not able to uh, do any kind of voltage division or anything like that. So instead, we have to write a KVL equation around the single loop. And so that's done here, adding the terms going clockwise. The voltage drops here, as indicated by the colored uh, plus minus signs. Each of those colors corresponds to one of these terms. So we can see how that arises. And if you need detailed explanation of that, of course, this explain this KVL equation button would show you that. Or if you want more explanation about dependent sources um, or control variable equations, those are also available there. And so that KVL equation will allow us to solve for the one mesh current, I1, here. And then, of course, we also need a control variable equation because we have a, a Vx, which is our control variable, um, that controls the dependent source. Um, it's not visible right now because I am uh, showing the uh, these plus and minus signs, so I actually have to continue there, and that'll show me where the Vx is located on the 2 ohm resistor. Um, but that, we write a uh, Ohm's law equation there using the passive sign convention. Now remember, because the mesh current enters the positive sign of Vx, then it will be uh, a plus sign in Ohm's law, whereas if it had a, uh, the current was going the other direction or the signs were reversed here, then we might have a negative sign here. So we have to always be careful about polarity in any of these equations. And of course, that has to be substituted into there. And then we would solve that equation for I1. After making that substitution, it'll involve only the one variable of I1. Um, and the numerical value there is indicated, which will also yield the control voltage. Now the tricky part in this problem, or perhaps trickiest part, is to find this voltage VBA. And to do that, we generally have to write, um, have to sum the voltage drops going from node B to node A along a path that, of course, doesn't include current sources. So we don't have any current sources here, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, and we basically uh, could do that in, in two different ways. We could go along this path here, or we could go along this longer path around here. Either path would give an acceptable equation. Um, clearly, the simpler equation will be to go this direction here, because um, that involves only two voltage drops as opposed to three. Um, Circuit Tutor will accept either one. But in this case, um, the VBA, we're adding voltage drops from because uh, VBA, remember, means VB minus VA, and therefore uh, we want to find the drops going from VB to VA. Um, you could also treat that as a voltage and write a KVL equation around a loop that includes a path directly between points A and uh, sorry, point A and point B, um, which is equivalent to doing this. So VBA um, here, because we encounter the negative sign of the voltage source, that's actually voltage rise. So the voltage drop would be the negative of this value. So it's negative the value of that source, which is 3 angle 0. 
and then we have to find the voltage drop across the inductor going in the clockwise direction and noting that that involves passive sign convention with respect to I1 that would be plus I1 times the impedance of J8 ohms and then plugging in the value of I1 that was computed up here from the, uh, the KVL equation then we can do that on a calculator and compute the complex value of that voltage and finally we have to do an inverse phasor transform to get back into the time domain because remember this is in the phasor domain being a complex number and so we know that that will always be a cosine function uh, because that's what phasors are based on and the magnitude 3.35 becomes the amplitude of the cosine function the frequency here is given by the value of f and we do have to remember that f is the uh, cycle frequency so that's 60 kilohertz that is not the value of omega so in this case we need to be sure to multiply that times 2 pi so that would give us 120 pi kilohertz and if you work that out to at least three digits that would be 377,000 T um, and then the phase angle would be that of the phaser 149 degrees and the units of course would be volts we always have to provide units for the answers so um, that's an example of that. Now let's work an actual problem uh, that's similar to that. So again we have a single loop problem where we now have a SOT uh, voltage from VB. This again is VBA. Remember VAB would just be the negative of that. It would be VA minus VB but in this case it's VBA which is this voltage minus this voltage. So let's look and see if there would be anything we could simplify here and I believe there is and it says it might help to simplify the circuit um, and indeed here it will so let's go into the circuit editor it's not really necessary to do this I mean it, it's not going to save us a lot of work really but we may as well do it um, so we have um, on one side of this we can combine these two impedances but those cannot be combined with these two because that would disturb the value of VBA because that depends on the voltage drop for example from here to here across those elements and now if we start combining them with these elements then that voltage drop will get redistributed around the loop um, even though the total current of the loop would be the same um, this voltage drop would in fact change so we're not allowed to combine things that are on opposite sides so we can only combine these two so that's easy to do so let's make this uh, negative j3 just adding those together which we can do in our head and then we'll change that to a short circuit remember that wouldn't make any sense at all of course to make it an open circuit because then we would have no more circuit anymore and that certainly wouldn't be equivalent to the original combination um, this is still a capacitive impedance so we can leave it as a capacitor or we can change it to a generalized impedance um, doesn't really matter um, I'll just do that and we'll check that combination so that is correct and then on the other side of EBA um, we have this impedance and this one of course a dependent source can never be combined with anything else um, but now we do have a SOT current through that source but remember that that or rather I should say not a SOT current but a control current uh, which controls the dependent source uh, but remember that uh, control currents uh, because it flows through here it's also going to exist um, here as well and so it doesn't matter as far as combining these two elements if we had a control voltage that would be a different matter and that would not allow us to combine these elements but because they are uh, it is a current that will, will not be disturbed by combining the elements. So we can make this 2 plus J7. And now notice that's turning red because that needs to be a generalized impedance, not a resistor anymore, because it's no longer has a valid resistive value, which would be a positive real number. So we change it to an impedance, and then this one we need to change to a short. So I'll use uh, the drop down menu here and change that to a short or I could have clicked over here as well either way and we'll check that combination and that is correct and that's all the simplification basically that we can do uh, because again we cannot combine these two impedances being on opposite sides of uh, the VB or VA so we're done editing and again that step could have been skipped it doesn't really matter very much but now we will need to use single loop analysis we don't have a single node pair of course so that wouldn't work and those are the only options we're being given so let's first write our KVL equation that's the most uh, complicated thing and it does remind us that we need to use uh, an individual term so for example we can't mentally combine um, these two impedances together and write a single voltage drop even though mathematically that would be valid circuit tutor likes you to put in separate terms um, just to help in evaluating your equation so um, 
So we will start maybe from here. We will need a, uh, a mesh current times an impedance, and then another one of those terms. Again, we cannot use just one term and combine the two values because that would not be accepted, even though it may be mathematically correct. And then we need a fixed voltage across the voltage source, so we need one of these terms. And finally, we need a voltage drop across a uh, current controlled voltage source, or CCVS, and that would be of this form here. And then finally, all of that is equal to zero. Of course, we have to write a complete equation always, um, or it's not going to be valid, so we need always an equal sign. So, of course, there's only one current here, I1, and that first impedance uh, was 2 plus J7, so we just enter that. And then again, we have I1 for the second impedance, and that's going to be negative J3. And then for the voltage drop, the value of V1S is 2 angle 0. That's for the independent voltage source. Now we do have to carefully check signs and polarity here. So if we think about it, we're adding drops going in a clockwise direction just by choice. I mean, we could add voltage rises, but it's probably more convenient here if we're going to go clockwise to add voltage drops. So um, that is in fact a drop because we're going from positive to negative side of the voltage. Now remember, this is actually an AC voltage, but we're just ignoring that for purposes of polarity to determine that. So we just consider that as plus and minus. Okay, and finally we need the voltage drop across the <clears throat> 4 ohm IX source. So we fill in the 4 and, and the IX. And again, we have to worry about polarity, as always. Um, so here we're encountering the negative sign first. So that's actually a voltage rise. So therefore we need to put a negative sign out front here. Or I guess you could put that in the coefficient of the 4 if you like. Um, I think that's accepted. But in any case, uh, I'm just doing it like this. So that is correct. We have the KVL equation. Now we need the control variable of the dependent source. So let's choose a control variable equation. And remember that the dependent source has an output value of 4 ohms times Ix, which has units of volts, since an ohm times an amp will be a volt. And that is indeed a voltage source. Uh, but the control variable is Ix. That's the current that actually controls this value. And that Ix is the current through this impedance. Um, so we want to write an equation for Ix. And that will be just one mesh current, of course, because there's only one mesh, uh, well, one interior mesh in the circuit. So we have Ix goes in the same direction as I1, because I1 goes clockwise. Therefore, it will go up through that impedance in the same way that Ix goes up through it. So again, we always have to check polarity because if Ix pointed down, for example, we would need a minus sign here, or if I1 were defined in the other direction. Okay, so let's check that. That's correct. And finally, we'll do our SOT uh, non-branch voltage. Now remember, you can't call that a branch voltage because it does not appear across a single circuit element. So we need to use the palette of terms for a not non-branch voltage. And so that will be VBA equals to what? And of course, we could put terms on either side of this equation, however we please, but I'm just going to do it this way. And we have two choices again. We could go this way, or we could go this way. doesn't really matter, but we want to add the drops going from VB to VA, since that will give us VB minus VA. So let's just go um, this way, for example, just to be different. Um, so that first voltage drop now um, will be of this form, and it's going to be I1 times that impedance. The impedance is Z1, which we see is 2 plus J7. But now, again, we have to think about polarity, as always. And so to get a voltage drop, if I1 is positive, for example, that will be a plus down here and a negative up here. That's actually going to make it a voltage rise. So since that's not consistent with the drop, we make that a minus sign to have the correct polarity. Then we go through the second element, and we're going to need the 4 ohm Ix type of term to get to point A. So we fill in the 4 and the x. So this is, in a sense, sort of part of the KVL equation we wrote previously, except that now we're going in an opposite direction, so it's going to be the negative of that. And here, again, we want to make sure we have a voltage drop going from v, B to A. And indeed, this is a drop because we encounter the plus sign first and then the negative sign. So that will have a plus sign there. And again, polarity is critical on everything. So we make sure that's correct. Okay, so that does 
The value is being correct. So now we have all the required equations to solve the problem. So we'll click no more equations. And now it tells us that we have to enter a numerical quantity for, or a numerical value for any quantity that we haven't done so. And of course that would include I1. And if we don't want to enter I1 directly, if we want to go straight to entering VBA, for example, if you prefer to compute it that way, you could skip this step and just enter VBA. Um, but I'm going to go back and actually put in the, the mesh current first. So now we have to compute this. And Ix here is equal to I1. So we can really, we might need to do this on paper, but in this case, I think I can uh, do that in my head. So we're going to have I1 times uh, 2 minus 4, since Ix is just equal to I1. So we're going to have a negative 2. And then the J7 minus J3 will be uh, J4. So we're going to have negative 2 plus J4 I1 is equal to, then bring the constant over the right-hand side, a negative 2. So let's go on a calculator then to compute that. Oops, I want to keep that visible, so we do that. And so we're going to end up needing to divide the negative 2. So I'll put a negative 2. And by the way, before I start here, I should check that we are in a complex number mode. And here we're in a polar mode, which is actually what we want to be in, um, because um, we want the answer in polar form here to enter in this form. The currents and voltages generally are entered in circuit tutor in a polar form, whereas impedances are usually entered in a rectangular form. So we need negative 2, and we're going to divide that by um, a parenthesis for the complex number. And remember that complex number was going to be um, negative 2. And then we're going to have the uh, J4 minus J3, so that was J4. And so that's negative 2 plus, and instead of J, we use I, 4. And close parentheses, because it's a complex number there, we have to divide by the entire thing. And when we click Enter there, that gives us our value in polar form. Um, if you weren't in polar form, you'd have to then change the mode, or you could use a math function under the math menu to change it um, from rectangular to polar. But it's already in the correct form here. So we'll just enter that directly in our form. So that's going to be 0 0.4472. And then the phase angle will be uh, 63.43 degrees and we'll check that and that is correct and it's been printed on the screen and Ix of course has the same value so it's printed out as well and now we need to use the SOT variable equation um, to actually compute VBA so we're going to be using this equation now so again we need to do a little bit of arithmetic here and remembering that Ix is equal to I1 so I'm going to have the I1, which is this uh, previous value. So I can go up and just pull that value there and hit Enter. Um, and let's see, we are, well, actually, that will not be accepted. That's one problem with the, this particular calculator model, um, is that that would not be considered a valid format um, because um, it doesn't allow inputs in degrees. Remember, it only allows inputs in radians. So there's a couple of ways I could handle that. Probably the easiest way is just to um, let me go ahead and uh, well, let's clear that entry. Um, is to actually just use this form. So I'll go up there and select that, and that will be our I1, and. I can go back and edit that to get rid of the minus sign. That'll give us a uh, the actual value of negative I1. And I want to multiply that times. Um, so remembering that I, I used a negative I1 here, that's going to make a negative 4 here. So we're going to have negative 2 plus J7. So we're going to multiply now times parentheses, negative 2 plus I7. And that should hopefully give us the correct value. 
So we'll enter that down here as 3.256. And then the phase angle will be negative 10.62. And that is correct. Now, if you had wanted to enter this a different way, you could have retyped it as, for example, um, 0 0.4472. And we could use a value that I've already defined as this variable e, and which is basically um, lowercase e to the i pi over 180. And if I raise that to the power of that uh, angle, 63.43, that would also um, work. And I'll just show that that gives you the same value basically we had up here, just round it off a little bit. So we could have done that and then multiply that instead if you didn't want to use this. So there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Okay, so now um, we just need to do the inverse phasor transform. And so here we're going to use the uh, value of VBA in the phasor domain, and that's going to be 3.26. And now we need the value of omega. So we need to compute that and go back to our calculator and compute 2 pi times f. Because remember, f in kilohertz, that is never the angular time frequency. That is the uh, cycle frequency. So we're going to go back to that. Um, and we have, let's see, going back to the calculator. Um, so we have uh, 2 times pi times 8,000 which is 8 kilohertz, and that gives us 5265, or rounding that off, I'll make it 500, uh, 50,300, since the significant digits won't be all that accurate. And finally, um, the angle then um, would be the negative uh, 10.6 degrees. And we'll go ahead and check that. And that is correct, and that's been printed on the screen. And that basically completes the problem. Um, you can see a detailed explanation of this if you wish. So I'll just show that for reference, and that basically shows it as if it were an example, as I showed you previously. And this explains all the detailed steps in computing VBA, for example, um, if you want to review that. So that concludes this problem.